It's time for the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Each week, Trading Stocks Made Easy demystifies stock trading and investing so you can profit big. And now here's the host of Trading Stocks Made Easy, the wealthy investor, Tyrone Jackson. And welcome back. It's Tyrone Jackson of Trading Stocks Made Easy. See, I knew you would join me sometime soon. Well, guess what? We are kind of live from New York. This is one of our early podcasts that we're actually doing from New York. Most of the time I'm actually recording the podcast, it's from Los Angeles. I happen to have a group of wonderful people in the studio tonight who are all wealthy investors from New York. Hello, hey, gentlemen and ladies. Hello. All right, so some of you have been on the podcast before, and for some of you, it's your first time. So welcome, welcome. I'm going to go around and have you just talk a little bit about yourselves and kind of how you discover the Wealthy Investor Program. I don't think I'm speaking prematurely when I say that you're all successfully trading in the stock market, making money month by month, week by week. Money Making Mondays, anybody? Money Making Mondays. Yes. All right. And just so, because uh, a lot of people have been asking, like, what is Money Making Mondays? Well, there are three levels of the Wealthy Investor Program should you come to a live class in New York or L.A. The first is what we call Regular Millionaire. Then there's something called Inner Circle. And then the highest level is the Mentor Program, where essentially you trade what I trade. And we have a specific trade that we do on Mondays. Please don't ask me what it is right now. But uh, there's some things that we do do on Mondays that cater to the particular market that we're in right now. Just to let everybody know that Zane Mark is here. Good evening, Zane. Good evening. Uh, Melissa Hebank is here. Good evening. Good evening. Andre Blake is here. You've been on the show before. Hello, hello. Yes, sir. And of course, Brian DeMars. Good evening, Tyrone. Yes. Nice to have you all here, in, here. in this roundtable format. Yes. Now, we're going to talk a lot. This episode's not only about trading, but also about your millionaire mind. And we're going to talk about what that means. So, Zane, you've been with us before. Can yes. you just give a recap uh, of how you started trading and what it has done for you in your life? Okay. Um, I'm a musician, so I'm, a lot of my income is um, PIGs, P-I-G, Passive Income Generators. Yes. So making money, residual income is like nothing new to me. Um, how I got into the class, a friend of my wife's was a member and asked my wife to show up. And my wife asked me to show up and said, well, we both can't go, so you go. And I came and I stayed. And I'm not really sure how long I've been here now, but it's been a minute. So, and you know, and it's been very good for me. So the thought of um, getting those pigs, that passive income generating stock market money on a weekly, monthly, annual basis and quarterly with the dividends was like right in my wheelhouse. and. Just a lovely thing for me. So. Can you ever imagine not trading for a month? No. Okay. No. And, and why is that? So I'm a musician and I don't have a nine to five job. And so it's not like every Thursday or every other Thursday that I get an income. Even if I'm doing a show, they pay me weekly. That's not the norm for me. So I'm just used to making the money, how I make the money, when I make the money. So the stock market just seems to be a place for me where I can just dip in, dip out, jump in, jump out when I want, depending on my schedule. And it's been good for me. I, I Well, I started to say, I had, you, you were just talking about it. I hadn't seen one smile the whole time. I mean, you're doing all right for yourself. I'm, 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 I'm okay. But this has been, it's the last uh, couple of weeks has been a little mind-altering and changing for me. So. Okay. All right, we'll get into that. Okay. Uh, welcome, Melissa. How are you? I'm great. Thank uh, you. Okay. This is your first time on a podcast, is that right? It is. And have you listened to the show before? No. Okay, great. Thanks for the support. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody how you came to uh, learn how to trade and invest in the stock market. Tyrone first. I've never listened to a podcast before. Okay. But you'll be my first. Well, thank you. How I got to the Wealthy Investor, I've, I've actually been a student of a lot of teachers over the years um, who've talked about creating passive income, financial freedom, um, a lot of well-known teachers. And, um, you know, and I'm not one of those people who can, like, go and buy big investment properties. You know, I, I'm a salaried employee, and I, but I've also been a student of, like, you know, especially as a woman, like, creating financial literacy for myself and knowing the importance of that. And um, so a couple of years ago, I was talking to a friend of mine who actually was one of your students years ago. And I had this goal of creating a certain amount of residual income every month. And I was like, I don't know how the heck I'm going to do this, but this is something I really want to do. And I think it's really important. And she says, you know, you should you should meet Tyrone and go to one of his classes and check it out for yourself. And 
privately, I love numbers. I'm kind of like into analytics. Um, I have an art degree, but yet I love numbers. So I, I got introduced to you. And, and when I went through your orientation and I went through the numbers and it actually lined up with my goals, I was like, oh, wow, this is actually on track with the measures I've created over a few years in terms of what I wanted to fulfill on. And um, so it just felt right. I knew that this was the place I wanted to be. And I'm profoundly grateful. I mean, it's been a challenge at times, but now it's, I, you know, I can pretty much predict what I'm going to make monthly on an ongoing basis. And then sometimes there's market conditions, but for the most part, I can predict what I'm going to make every month. Yeah. And we're going to get into that as we uh, get a little deeper into the show. Well, thank mm-hmm. you. Glad you're here. Thank you. Andre Blake. Yes, Tyrone Jackson. You have done, every time I need somebody to show up somewhere, <laughs> I just can call you and say, hey, could you be a guest? And you're like, what day? And here we are. And here we are. So you've been on the show before. Yes. And uh, just on a personal note, we are also fairly good friends. Wouldn't you say that? <sighs> Yes. Fairly good friends. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is the man who's like, you got to get a BMW and you'll leave the Range Rover. And <laughs> you'll then, like that message I get monthly. Uh, stock market trading and investing, just yes. remind the audience of your uh, introduction to it. Okay, well, as you as you mentioned, we are, you know, friends. I guess you could, <laughs> friends, you can say that. We've known each other a long time. And uh, I remember when you came to me and said, I'm going to start this thing. I'm going to teach people how to trade for income. And I was like, okay, great. I'm there. And uh, I thank you on a regular basis for for helping me to change my financial life. As an actor, residual income is no stretch for me. I get it. You know, you're in a movie. You finish the movie or a TV show, whatever it is. It runs. They send your residual check. Great. But... If you're not on a show on a weekly basis, like Zane was saying, sometimes those checks can, the distance between them can grow. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, this has been really wonderful. Fortunately for me, um, I'm I'm now the voice of BET. And uh, when that job came along, it gave me that steady income. And understanding the power of trading, I knew that, okay, at some point in time, this job is going to go away. Mm -hmm. But if I can feed my account, and like Melissa was saying, know pretty much what I can do on a monthly basis. And then once once you start trading and you see the power in it, and and your and your account starts starts growing and, and the amount in which that you can make starts growing, you go, hey, wait a minute, in a short space and time here, I could do this other thing that I love for fun. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And you know, you have these light bulb moments and uh, it's 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 pretty amazing. It's it's pretty amazing. I remember when I first started trading 20 years ago, I, I got that really early on that, oh my God, there's a lot of money to be made mm-hmm. here. And like, if I just can grow my account and put more money in it, like I'd be looking at financial freedom on a regular oh, basis. Oh yeah, yeah, quickly. Yeah. And Brian DeMars is with us. Brian, good evening to you. Good evening, Tyrone. Now you've been on the show before, but can you uh, tell the audience your story once again. Sure. About four years ago, one of my wife's friends invited us to your intro class, uh, which was pretty interesting because at that time I was talking to my wife about how I need to subsidize my income. Uh, the industry I'm in, printing and direct mail, was starting to shrink because of the internet. So therefore, I wanted to find a way to generate more income. And we went to your class, and your story was so compelling. And my wife turned to me when you explained how to write a cover call, and she said, you could do this. And I said, yeah, I could do this, you know. So I've been doing it. (laughs) And your wife, ironically, is an astrologer. She is. So she read me pretty quickly, didn't she? She read you. (laughs) She she said the date was good. (laughs) Right. <laughs> she she made a point of shaking your hand after the class and telling you that you're a wonderful human being is what she said to you. Yeah, that was mighty nice. That was mighty nice. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome. There, there are a couple of issues I, I just kind of want to touch on. When I teach people how to trade and invest in the stock market, the first thing I always have to do is talk about your mindset and your money beliefs, Mm -hmm. right? Because you kind of have to get ready for how much money there actually is to be made in the stock market. And I think all of you would agree with me that there really are no limits, right? Um, So since this episode is really kicking off the idea of a millionaire mindset, I'm just going to ask you, Andre, first, what does that mean to you when I say millionaire mindset? It's funny, I, I can relate to that because I can honestly say that I did not have a millionaire mindset prior to uh, getting involved in the program. You know, people talk about being millionaires or thousandaires or, 
you know, hundred airs. I was like a dollar air, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because you know you have these aspirations and these goals, but you don't really know what that means. You have to stretch your capacity for what you believe is actually possible in your life. Um, I remember early on in the program, you would talk about using bigger numbers because if you can't say it, you can't have it. And there's truth to that. There's, there's, there's validity in that. Mm -hmm. And um, now that I've been able to say these bigger numbers, I realize that I, sh I can actually have these bigger numbers. It's amazing. It changes, it changes everything. It changes the people you choose to spend time with, some people you have to let go, and uh, that's okay too. Yeah, that's part of the process. Yeah, that's part of the process. Melissa, you want to speak to that shift in mindset? Yeah, definitely. I'm kind of going to riff here off of you is that mm -hmm. I think it's important to think big. I come from a, you know, like a background where it was, you just got a job at the local grocery store or something like that. Grew up in a rural community in the Midwest. And a lot of the people I went to school with never went off to college or they kind of stayed there. So I've had to do a lot of work over the years to really reprogram myself and train the way I think. I've done a lot of personal development work, all that kind of stuff. As I relate to the trading, I've had to set like goals and then build on the goals and get myself ready for that next goal. And then my mind starts to kind of get ready for the next amount of money because there really is a lot of abundance that's possible. I've been tracking out this next year and where I could be in a year from now if I just stay consistent. Part of it is just the consistent action. But then you have the result. And the next thing you know, it's like, okay, if I take the action, then it's like I've, I heard a great saying once, you know, act your way into right thinking. <laughs> you know, you take the yeah. action and then it, it shifts your thinking because you start to see like, oh, this is possible. Sure. But it's also not fairy dust and pie in the sky either. There's a there's I think it's important to stay very grounded in reality, but then also think big at the same time mm -hmm. and then set goals. And then over time, you start building and, and you get more comfortable because I think we're also too, some of us are. We have to be mindful of that. Sometimes I think we have an internal clock that can't handle all of it. So it's like, yeah, it's a know, lot to take in that you could earn yeah. five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month consistently. Yeah, and you see a lot of people out there. I mean, you can you can see in the entertainment business or whatever, people get success too fast and they can't handle it. Right, that's right. Mm. So I think there's also a, a maturity and a responsibility for it. It's like if I, you know, if I like achieved that goal like overnight. I might either one take it for granted or just totally sabotage it. So I think it's important to be responsible for that. And then a little over time, I've had to change my mindset. And I, I do too. I believe that we do have to change the people around us at oh, some definitely. point. Um, and I, I, I'm very careful about who I spend my time with and who I talk to about different things, and especially this, because a lot of people will be like, oh, that's crazy. The stock market's risky or whatever. What are you, what are you thinking? Right. Andre, you wanted to say? Yeah, I wanted to say, like, for me, like when you talk about – getting used to making, I don't know, five, ten thousand dollars a month. And and I think we, Tyrone, have had this conversation about plateauing. Right. So like you reach a plateau and you go, okay, wait a minute. And you kind of breathe. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, okay, oh my gosh, I never thought I could do this. But then when you're in that space for a minute and you get comfortable, you're like, okay, I can handle some more. And and this growth happens. So for me, this past year, and I've, I've been fortunate enough to be able to recognize that I've been in an expansive state insofar as my mindset goes. And when that happens, that's when things get really exciting. Sure. You know, I like to tell the story of when I went out to L.A. in 2000. I was very fortunate, uh, fortunate enough before I went out to L.A. I had a lot of success in voiceovers. And I went out to L.A. with like almost a hundred grand in my pocket and I came back broke with two kids. Yes. <laughs> you know, people were like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, and even for myself, I'm like, what am I going to do? But I had a shift in mindset. I bumped into you. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm going to do this thing. I was like, whatever it is, man, I'm down. I got to change my world. <laughs> right, <laughs> you right. know? And when, like they say, if you shoot for the moon, even if you don't make it and you fall amongst the stars, you're still doing great. Well, I tell you guys every single month that you're making money every single month and you're like in the top 1% because most people aren't trading for wealth and doing as well as you guys are. Brian, did you want to say? Well, I was going to say that, that if you have gratitude, it's a, it's a good, mm -hmm. good frame of mind to have because mm -hmm. you, the rules and laws of attraction in the universe, this is my belief about money, if you put that out there, it'll come back to you. If you're negative and you're starting – 
start to think that way in in your actions and in your trading, you'll get negative results. Yes, you will. And I have experienced it. Yes. (laughs) And if I'm at a discipline, you know, I think discipline is an important part of trading too. And I was going to say a lot of the things that I I like that you teach us, Tyrone, it resonates with um, some things I learned when I was a much younger man, um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm like intention of purpose and and definition of purpose and being positive. Th- these are all things you teach, which Napoleon Hill also talked about. And I had stopped thinking that way for many years. Mm-hmm. And then I started coming to your class again, and things have changed for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Zane, you, it seems like you were always doing well, right? You, you owned real estate. You always had your music career. So, so how has trading influenced your thinking in that way? Well, let's back that story up. <laughs> <laughs> there was five of us, three boys, my mother and father. We lived in a one-bedroom apartment. My mother slept on the couch. My father and two brothers slept in the same full-size bed, and my youngest brother slept in, in the crib for forever and ever I'm in. Father was a musician. So we were used to highs and lows. And finally, my father started... Um, working on Broadway and that's when things started to level out and become normal. There were no major highs and lows. So even when he was doing a show, you know, or not doing a show, we didn't know the difference. Here's what I wanted to say. I've been in the program for a while and you've said several things to us over and over and over and over again. And a lot of that, I think I, I don't want to say poo-pooed it or brushed it aside, but it's not until recently that I'm going, Wow, just like something clicked. Andre talked about the light bulb moment. I'm like, hmm. And, you know, Brian talked about gratitude. And um, Melissa talked about be careful about who you surround yourself with because Mm -hmm. um, those people will pull you down or, you know, fight against Mm -hmm. your goals or whatever it is. And um, I think there's three of them. One of them was be careful who you surround yourself with. And, you know, those people will bring you down or tell you this is not capable, you can't do this, this it's not going to happen. Um, another thing that you mentioned was set a goal. And this is the, the one that, you know, I've been in class since forever. But this is the one just not until recently that has really clicked for me. So you tell the story. How much money do you want to make? A lot. And that sounds good, but that's not good. Right. And you really have to say, I want to make $7.23 a month and, and set a goal and work towards that. I kid you not, we, we had a little conversation sure last did. month, and you said set a goal, and I said, I, this is my number right here. That first week, I made the number in one week. Yeah, well, I, I sat down with you for 20 minutes. I said, do yeah. this four times this month. Yeah. There's your number. So, but, but I'm saying I, I did that in one week, and that kind of like scared me for a minute. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, crap. And so the next two weeks, I made another 30% over what my original number was. This last week, I didn't do nothing. I just kind of sat around and watched, you know, <laughs> you know. So I say all of that to say, you know, setting the goal is an extremely important aspect. You can change the number or change the goal. Mm-hmm. And I already talked about plateauing. You know, all right, I, I wanted to make $10,000 a month. I'm making ten. Now I need twelve. So I got to do something else or whatever it is. Or no, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to just collect my dividends or whatever it is. But to not be out here just willy-nilly. And I think... Um, what makes your program different from most is that most people say, well, if you buy this stock, you look at this number and do that. And they're just kind of hoping and praying that the stock goes up. And if the stock goes up, great. But what happens if the stock goes down? Yes. And that's where the issue is. So now right. the stock don't have to go nowhere. And the whole concept of covered calls means that no matter what's happening, mm-hmm. something's happening. And yes. it's, most of the time, it's a good thing for you. Yes. I want to back up here just a little bit. And, and anybody can take this. Uh, you've all introduced stock market trading and investing to your friendship circle. And you have gotten a wide variety of responses. Just very quickly, anybody want to speak to that? Well, I, I can. Just, most people don't get it. They just see the movies or they see people, you know, jumping out of windows because they lost all of their money and they don't they just don't understand you say covered calls or options or puts and it's just like I don't get it. Buy, sell, that's what they know. And all the craziness of it. And they usually see the bad part or they see the rich part of the Donald Trumps and those people mm-hmm. and abusing it. There's a lot that goes on in between. Yeah. What happened, uh, Melissa, with your friendship circle? Well I've introduced a lot of friends to this and I would say 95% of them are really grateful, and they come and join us on Saturday and, and Sunday, and some of them are now joining us on Sunday as well. So that is really cool, because I'm 
you know, I feel like I'm making a difference in my community and with my friendships. And But I also, too, have noticed around my friendships, you know, everybody's like, um, like, but one of the, the market tanks, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. And, you know, what I'm – and this kind of – this weaves into mindset, too. You know, at first when we went through, like, our first couple pullbacks in the program, it was like, oh, God, this is scary. Like, you know, the panic. And it's interesting now – I'm like calm and cool. Like, okay, it's pulled back. All right, just give it some time. It'll come back. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Okay, there's some things I can do. There's some different strategies I can put in place to go through this. So that's really a cool mindset that I'm calm and cool around it where everybody else kind of freaks out. And that I'm really grateful to you for it, Tyrone, because it's like there's so many different things that we can do in different situations. And Mm -hmm. to be able to stay steady and calm in those kind of situations is Mm -hmm. really great. I got to move it along here because we're going to run out of time. So I'm trying to get to as many questions as possible. Brian, uh, introducing it to your friendship circle, were you shocked at people's responses? Uh, What's interesting to me is I have one friend who said, can you do that for me? (laughs) Right. Uh, Right. So I'm doing it for him. Oh, you're running a hedge fund now is what you're trying to tell us, Brian. Not yet. (laughs) Soon, soon. Uh, But uh, I have another friend who wants me to do it for him? So it's it's interesting and that, and you're referring to actually trading in their account. For I them. trade in their account for them, right? And then I charge them a percentage. Yes, uh, only yes. when I make them money. Yes, that is correct. And Which I'm is making every them month. money every month, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. I'm doing better for them than I am for myself. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> Andre, you were shocked when certain members, even of your family, their reaction to trading and investing your own money. It was really interesting for me because I tried to in- introduce the program to as many of my friends as I possibly could. Uh, one good friend of mine, his son took to it like a duck to water mm-hmm. and is trading really well and doing really well. Um, my dad is a bit of a mathematician, but he got a little cowboy on me, so I kind of had to go, all right, dad, calm down. Just right. calm. We all have our stories, West Indian background and all of that for me. And, um, you know, so for me to be able to do this for myself and for my family is big. But I think about what Melissa was saying, and I think about uh, someone who I used to listen to a lot, uh, Jim Rohn. And when people talk about, oh, my God, the market's going to crash, I always think to myself, really? In life, things ebb and flow. Someone asked Jim Rohn, he said he was at a conference, and someone asked him, well, what do you think the next 10 years are going to be like? And he said, I think it's going to be pretty much like the last 10 years. There'll be high points, and there'll be low points, and there'll be a lot of stuff that's happening in between. I believe people get caught up in the fear and forgetting that everything's all right. Well, that is true. Now, the number one thing I can say from teaching people is that um, if you hand your money to somebody else, that's okay. But if you take control of your money, you're going to lose it all. Not I'll lose five hundred dollars. <laughs> like because you're doing it, it will all go away. Like every single mm-hmm. nickel you put into that TD Ameritrade account mm-hmm. can be gone. That's the fear. Yes. What is that about? Is it is it that people feel that they're not educated enough, or the person who they've given their money to somehow has some supreme knowledge? I think it's like what Zane said. People are just like I, I have, you know, they they believe what they see on TV or in the movies. Oh, I'm going to jump out the window and kill myself. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. Your account value might go down a little bit, but it's a buying opportunity and the market's going to turn around and you'll make more. Mm-hmm. Rela- People don't know how to relax around money. Okay. I mm. believe. It was a very emotional topic, Melissa. I think also, too, um, you know, like with anything in life, there, there's a skill. Like, you know, yep. I've been with you for a couple of years now. And at first, you know, there's some stupid things I've done, which you told me not to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and I'll know, by the way, when you've done those things. Yeah, you actually. can see it. Yes, we'll see that. So, um, and I remember doing my first trade, and I was like, oh, gosh, I better get on the phone with TD Ameritrade. This is like live money. Like, I better do it. You know? <laughs> oh, and it was great. But I think it's also, too, it's um, like with anything in life, it's demystifying it. And then as you learn it, and you start to do it, and you go, okay, next time I'm not going to do it quite this way, but I can do it this way. And now, having done this, and I think it's about, like with anything in life, we have to kind of, you kind of have to consistently work at it. And then you start to build a skill. And that kind of... There's a confidence that starts to emerge where it's like, okay, I can do this. Like, I can actually predict every month what I'm going to make. But I couldn't do that three years ago. I've had to stick with you and learn and and make a commitment to it and build a skill. I think that's interesting because that's something, as the teacher, that's something that I overlook, that trading really is a skill. And you need Mm -hmm. to go through markets that are rising and markets that are neutral and markets that are pulling back to manage the skills, eh? Yeah, but I think it it goes back to having an education. You don't just take your 
inheritance, uncle so and so passed away and left you all of this money, and you're going, well, the stock market is where I can make it, and you just take it, throw it in there, and do whatever you want. When I first started trading, I was trading mutual funds. And it was just, you know, no matter what I traded, it went well. And it wasn't because I was some great trader. It's just that was the condition of the market at the time. And so without a financial education, I can't say it on the air. I, you, <laughs> <laughs> without a financial education, you're just guessing. Yes, you and are guessing. you guess might it. guess well, you might not. But eventually that's going to catch up with you. And there needs to be some background, something. And I think that's why most people are afraid or are scared is because they don't know. And they're just out there willy-nilly. And I think the best thing about this class and the way you teach it is it's very pedestrian. I don't have to have a, a, a degree from MIT to understand what's going on. I don't have to have graduated high school to understand what's going on. And that's what's most important because any of those other classes or even just, if you just turn on uh, any of those market shows mm -hmm. and you market listen to them for about three minutes, you're like, I don't know what <laughs> yeah, I'm totally lost. Right. Yeah, you know, right. and, and that's not the case. So that's what I think most people are afraid of because they just don't know. You say call put. Nobody in here is, you know, skin started crawling because we know what that means. Right. Option. We know what that means. We know what the most people don't. And they're just out there willy nilly without a plan. Okay, let me ask you that. this question. Yeah. How many of you uh, prefer in the money calls as opposed to out of the money calls? Does anybody have a preference on that? I think you, most of you like selling out of the money calls, right? Well, it depends, it depends. on the market. A little bit yeah. of both. What's yeah. happening with the yeah. market? Why, why do you say that, Brian? Well, if the market's bias is tending to neutral or, or bearish, then a the money call is, is your best defense. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think it's best to mix it up. But I tend to lean a little more heavy on the in the money call. Okay. Uh, Melissa, in the money or out of the money? Um, it depends on the market. Okay. Like right now, I like to have my mi money cycling. Right. So I, I kind of like to be just like slightly in the money. Mm -hmm. Oh, and slightly then, in the money on your cover call, right? Yeah. And then... You know, have my money move every month, right? And, and then kind of move back in. Yeah, because you I always say the in the money calls is an attempt to try to trigger a sale, right? You, hey, listen, we mm -hmm. want that person to call us out early on the in the money call, mm -hmm. which doesn't happen. Andre, a little bit of both. Okay, you know, I, for me, right about now, it's been that at the money call, just okay. at the money, just in or just at. Right. And that's 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 been my sweet spot. Yes, yeah, so on certain stocks, it's really juicy, isn't it? <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. We, we'll try not to get it. We'll get to that a little bit later. Zane, in the money, out of the money. I'm a little of both like everybody else but just to go the next step the reason why we all say that is because we've been taught that all the eggs in one basket is not a good move we have an education to know in this particular situation do this in this particular election do that so it's not as scary or whatever it is as everybody else you know you you say all the time if this goes well we're good you know what's going to happen if it goes well what happens if it goes wrong yes and that's where the education part comes from and once you have that education that defensive mode, you know what to do, and the scare, the fear, and all of that stuff subsides, or at least goes down a notch, so right. you're able to step up. Right, Andre? You know what I really like, and this is something that I forgot. You don't always have to trade. Okay. If your life is busy, yes. or you're caught up in something, right. guess what? You can just have your money sit there in cash. Right. Oh, my gosh. Right. So I think a lot of times people or friends who don't understand, you go, yeah, well, you know, things are going well, and they think you're in there, and you're mixing it up, and you've got your whole account in one trade, and it's like, no. Well, people think that the only kind of trading you can do is day trading, sit in a computer yeah. all day, and there are other oh. styles. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I want to get your opinion on that and a whole lot more, but i got to take a commercial break. We'll be back with more of our Traders Roundtable from New York right after this. You're listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Want to learn more about how to trade and invest in the stock market? Visit thewealthyinvestor.net slash products. That's thewealthyinvestor.net slash products and order the Wealthy Investor's Guide to Stock Market Success audio series. This easy to follow five CD audio series and manual will teach you the basics of how to buy and sell stocks how to collect quarterly dividends for life, plus hidden income generating strategies like covered call writing and volatility trading. Start creating financial freedom right now. Get the financial education you need to get ahead. Visit thewealthyinvestor.net slash products. 
Wealthy Investor. Wealthy Investor. WealthyInvestorRadio.com. And welcome back to our Traders Roundtable live from New York. Well, not really live. It's a tape podcast, but I just like <laughs> saying that. I start a lot of rumors on this show. You know, I started a rumor that even the Pope listens to trading stocks. Maybe. <laughs> nice. But I don't think the Pope <laughs> so needs to listen. Is that right? Maybe. maybe. You never know. Hey, if he's not the Pope, he needs some money. There's, a, there's that out of the money cover call. <laughs> You never know. Uh, Brian, you wanted to say something before the break regarding stock trading. Yeah, I was going to say what's really cool is if um, I'm driving in my car and uh, I set a trigger to sell something while I'm totally not involved in the market at all and I, that thing goes and I and I made $200 while I'm just driving my car. It's, Isn't that great? It's really cool. And uh, it, The other thing I can find, I have found out about stock market trading and investing is you get spoiled. Oof. Like it's it's hard to believe that most people aren't making a predictable amount of money every single month. Has anybody experienced that? Where you kind of take it for granted a little bit? Oh, yeah. mm. Yes. Yeah. For me, the 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 one that that tickled me most was um, I was on vacation. I took myself to the south of France. I believe I told you about that. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm on my trip, and I clicked my mouse, and I made some money, and I was that just it tickled me to no end yeah. because all you need is your computer. And an internet connection, and it's on. That is correct. And you're making money from everywhere, except Jersey. For weird, <laughs> hey man, I live in Jersey. Reason. I'm, I'm sorry, no, you can do it. You don't want to go there. Wow. Oh, oh, man. I know no some love for Jersey. Jersey. <laughs> 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 Even though I say that on the West Coast, people go, yeah, it's true. Hey. But you prove them wrong. You prove them wrong. I will tear stuff up. And okay. uh, Melissa, did you want to say something about that? Being able to trade from anywhere, has that has that been a good thing for you? Oh, yeah, it's great. It's great. That's what I love about it is I can, like, I, I like to travel a lot. So it's fun to be able to go. And then even on my phone, I can, although I like to, I prefer to stay on a computer. Yeah, I'm not that good on the phone. You punch in the wrong thing. Yeah, right, exactly. that wrong tab. I like to trade on vacation. I was recently Mm -hmm. in Maui, and in Maui, you have to get up at 6.30 in the morning to place your trades uh, if you're covered call writing, and I did that first thing. And people were like, you had to trade on vacation? I'm like, no, 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 trust me, it worked out. (laughs) It's not a bad thing. (laughs) It's not a bad thing. (laughs) Was it like a labor? Uh, okay, so here's my favorite part of the show because I'm just going to call out some ticker symbols. You don't know what it is. You have not seen what's inside the seal envelope. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> they used to say that on the Johnny Carson show. So I'm just going to pick out some numbers and everybody give me your visceral reaction oh, to okay. these stocks. Here we go. Okay? okay, and we'll go around. We'll go around really quickly. That way, everybody opts in. Brian, AXP, trade or an investment? I wouldn't touch it. Okay, why? It's missed on earnings, and uh, it's just not in favor with, with the big money right now. Yeah, that's American Express. They beat them up after the last Costco yes. deal. Andre, AXP? I'm out. Okay, why? I, my money's elsewhere. Yes, thank you. I like the phrasing on that. Melissa? <laughs> um, I haven't I've, I haven't touched it. Okay. Not at all. Why? I think I came in at a time in the program where it was starting to kind of go out of favor. Yeah, it just class. wasn't in favor. Yeah. Zane, AXP. Maybe some money. Yeah? Yeah. Uh huh. And then I guess I was positioned in a certain way that when it stopped making me money, it was easy for me to unwind out of it. Oh, and exit and with a profit? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And, and I was awesome. good. So right now, there are other uh, credit cards that I would look at. Yes, of course there is. <laughs> All right, this is a softball. Everybody has an opinion on this DIS. Um, I'm holding it long term right now. Yeah, you're mad at it because it's not. <laughs> I'm not mad, <laughs> mad, but um, I, you know. You'd like to see it go higher I would sooner. Like to see it go higher, but you know I'm holding on to it for the dividend. They're paying it, you know, twice a year now as opposed to annually. So, you know, I I'm in it and I'm holding it. Okay, Melissa. Yeah, it's definitely a long term hold. Yeah. Although I'm a little annoyed with it right now. Yeah, I know you'd like to see it at least go up five dollars. Yeah. Is that right, Andre? Yeah, I mean I'm in it long term. My son loves it, so you know it's all good. Go Marvel. Yes, you know? <laughs> talk about Disney for those of you who haven't figured it out, Brian. Long term hold, and once it's back in favor, perhaps trading leaps on it again. Okay, trading leaps. Mm-hmm. Wow, very nice. Okay, uh, Facebook FB, Melissa. Um, I'm starting to build positions in it. Mm-hmm. Why build a position? For the long term growth. Mm-hmm. And then it, it increases the value of my account over time as well. Yes, it does. It has done very well, Brian. Right now, I'm not in it, but uh, I think it's a great investment. I mm-hmm. think that's going to skyrocket. The kids are using Facebook now. It's, you know, all, it's all that advertising. Yeah, it's all over the world. <laughs> Zane. It's over $100, so between that 100 and 150 sweet spot, as it were, seems to be the move. And now they just seem to have cornered this whole um, advertising thing for people that want to put their money in it and... They're running to it. Have you seen my ads in your feed? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's working for me. <laughs> Andre, working. Facebook. Hey, I'm in. Okay. You know, uh, 
Yeah, I like it. Long you like term, it? Sure. Okay. Long term hope. That's great. I, I love the fact that everybody knows when I toss out a ticker symbol, we all have our favorites, right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, there's somebody listening right now that says, yeah, sure, it can kind of work out for those guys in the studio. You know, the woman mentioned, Melissa, that she likes numbers. I'd like to get into this, but I have no idea where to start. Zane, uh, words of advice you would give that person? Depending on the size of your account, large or small, you can just start small or just paper trade, meaning trade make-believe money, and just see what happens. And know whatever your idea is or what you think you're bringing into the um, class, let that go for a minute and, as you like to say, be open. Just look and take a step back and be ready to experience something else. That is exactly right. Melissa? Oh, just starting out? Um, Well, you teach the basic covered calls in the beginning, um, which I think are real safe, conservative ways to go and start there and start small do one trade at a time and mm-hmm. start to get some practice and then build as you feel more comfortable absolutely andre words of advice for someone who would like to start trading their money but they're not sure what to do no account is too small you can always start with something like zane was saying listen even if you have 200 dollars, stick it in your account think of it as as some place to park your money long term and as it grows paper trade and soon you'll be able to write a covered call and then soon you'll be able to write two covered calls and it'll grow and it'll grow and one day you're going to turn around and go oh my god i made a thousand dollars and that thousand dollars can change someone's life and 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 it's real it's real money if you need it you can go get it right so it's it's you know just start yes you know do that for yourself that just first do. action Mm-hmm. Yes. Brian. Yeah, first things first, open up an account. And if you can, if you have enough money to uh, buy 100 shares of a Dow component like Microsoft, writing in the money cover call, experience the power of that, of being a self-directed investor, and then move on from there. Absolutely. And uh, for those of you who are listening who are not in New York and L.A., you could always go to witradeschool.com, become a member, and I actually answer your trading questions every week and post videos so that you can keep up on the market. It's almost like I do the research for you, and then you can follow that. And what we've discovered is a lot of people like to study online, and they're not in New York and in L.A. So what I want to ask you guys, would you be willing to come back, and we'll do a whole show just on options trading? Sure. Because you all sure. purchase options, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay, Absolutely. so you'll all make the commitment to come back? Definitely. You got it. Yeah, well, Absolutely. Well, thank you. It's been a real pleasure to have you here, and uh, I'm going to ask you back for that option show. Agree? Thanks Agree. for having oh, us. Totally cool. Back. All right. This is Tyrone Jackson, the Wealthy Investor, saying I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Trading Stocks Made Easy. The moral of the story, just open an account, head over to witradeschool.com, become a member, and get that financial education that will change your life. Until then, keep an open mind and happy trading. You've been listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Be sure to rate and review our show on iTunes. While you're on iTunes, be sure to click the subscribe button and you'll automatically receive our next episode.